Finally, finally, Anning is in the house, the 628. Boy, I ordered this, no word of a lie, probably about three months ago, and it has just arrived. Oh my gosh. But anyway, long story short, it's in the house. It's here on the bench, and we're going to look at it today. Another one of those smart meters, and of course, this one does have that oh-so-oh-modern look and design. This should be really interesting. What we have, a thermocouple to start things off, because yes, it does do temperature. Let's hope it has an ambient sensor as well, so we don't need this all the time. We'll soon find out. Also comes with a standard set of test probes. These are the, your atypical probes you see with most of the Ennings. You know, they're okay, nothing to write home about per se, but they get the job done. And of course, our handy dandy user's manual. Now what would a multimeter be these days without a little user manual? And thank heavens, at least in this case, we do have English and uh, nice and verbose because that's all of the specs. Good job, Anning. By the way, big shout out to all the winners of our Sanwa draw. Hey, that was a lot of fun. Our live stream over the weekend. Guys, your multimeters are being shipped this week. Form and functionality because, whoa, this multimeter really has a lot of that. Um, definitely Nouveau style looking. Um, I like And width wise, like. we're looking at around 143 millimeters. So around oh, just five short of five and a half inches in length. Um, a good size. This will definitely fit in your pocket. No problems there. And yes, of course, that boot does come off. And with it, we have access to the battery housing. DC 1.5 volts times two AAA batteries. Two AAAs to power this little guy. So as you can see already, brand new out of the box, it has a couple of scratches. And pretty significant as well. So, you know, right away, long term, uh, that's not a good thing. And I'm just baby handling this thing. So, oh, wow, what is up with that? If we compare the new 628 to the 618C, super popular uh, multimeter from Anning, uh, look-wise, fairly close. Now, the, obviously, the uh, big full-screen display on the Anning takes up a lot of that real estate, and that's probably what you're paying a slight premium for. Now, the big thing as well is those captive leads you have on the 618. Yeah, they're in there permanently. Not so with the new 20A. Non-captive leads, awesome. As I mentioned, those ending leads, nothing special. Uh, Cat 3, 1000 volt. Um, yeah, you know, eh, they're okay. PVC, um, standards, fair going on here. Nothing to get too excited about. On captive, as I mentioned, and there is the other side of the shroud. They have a little bubble thing going on here, which, uh, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but it seems to, uh, seems to work. Now, big faux pas, if you've noticed, yeah. There is no color coding on here. No color coding whatsoever this is required um, to make sure you don't put your input jacks into the wrong probe. Why? Why do they do that? That's freaking dangerous. Ugh. At the top of the multimeter, we have our on off button, that red little signifier. Hold it down to press it for about two seconds and it turns on. On the side of the meter, we have two buttons, hold and flashlight, as well as select and non-contact voltage. Okay, let's turn on this multimeter, shall we? And there we go. Automatically, we are in auto mode. And you can see we have an ambient sensor on board after all. There is our uh, display coming up as well. True RMS, 6,000 counts. All right, so in a nutshell, there you go. That's what it looks like. What do you think? Mm, I don't know. Honestly, I'm not getting a uh, super duper feeling. And look at that. Look how you lose that visibility uh, just by changing the angle. And I mean, you can't see a darn thing at this point. So you really have to look at this uh, specific way in order to see what the heck you're seeing. And as you can tell, yeah, no tilt stand, no tilt stand on this multimeter. Uh, backlight shall we let's hold down on the top button for about two seconds and there you go okay well it's not bad backlight enabled you have a nice full screen display uh seems to be okay um we have a little bit of bleeding going here at the side that's where all of those leds are feeding the backlight but um generally speaking not too shabby now this is not going to stay on permanently unfortunately it stays on for about 30 seconds 40 seconds and then it's lights out in georgia so ah too bad let's put those input leads inside once again common is in the middle and voltage is on the right all right we're going to start with some 
DC accuracy. Okay, we are in auto mode right now. DC accuracy is what we want. And starting off with 2.50 volts. 2.500. Spot on, beauty. All right, let's it's go. Even. Let's and 4.999 is what we got. So not so shabby. Next up, 7.50 volts. And an A628 gives us 7.50. 6,000 count, true RMS, and so far, pretty darn accurate. Alrighty, finally, 10 volts even is what we need. And look at that, 10 volts even, Steven, awesome. So, uh, yeah, no surprise here, really, but um, Annings are usually pretty good in the accuracy department, and the 620A is no different. DC voltage showdown, here we go. I've got the Annings 618C on the right, and in the middle to start the show, well, not really middle, the far left, the left. The 620A. Okay, so 3.5 volts is what we're sitting at. 3.501, 3.505. These are both 6,000 count smart multimeters. Here we go. Let's take it up, 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 and away. We're going to sit at 5 volts, even Steven. 5.005 for the 620. 5.009, 5.010 for the 618. Close enough. Up and away. 7.60 volts, according to the DC power supply. 7.60 spot on for the Anang 620. 7.61. For the 618 okay higher 24.3 is what we're sitting at look at that 24.30 24.33 awesome and we're gonna max it out right now 32 volts even steven 32.01 for the 620 32.04 for the 618 awesome awesome well you can see that 620 is definitely a plus in the accurate department 618c was not far behind but i'm going to give this one to the 620. Of course, the biggest difference here is the fact that you have those nice non-captive leads on the 620 as opposed to the always attached 618. 618, you do have a bar graph, uh, a nice analog style bar graph at the top of the meter. Um, no such bar graph on the 620, uh, severely lacking, that's too bad. Um, in terms of responsiveness, I'm gonna give this one though to the 620. Um, I'm oscillating that uh, voltage up and down right now and a much faster response on the 620. So uh, lacking that bar graph, but it is definitely a lot faster. Next up is current. I've got the input jacks into the current input and it's still on auto mode. So let's bring it up, shall we? Switch 500 on. milliamps according to the uh, DC power supply coming up as 496 milliamps on the anning. Let's bring it up. Now, of course, um, don't have to worry about a threshold in milliamps because it's sharing the same circuit as the high current amps. So you can basically sky's the limit here. 700, 800, 900. Oh, look at that. We have a nice visual that kicked in at 800 milliamps. 800 milliamps reading a nice visual alarm, letting us know that we are in the danger zone. Awesome. Let's keep going up and away. Sitting at 2.2 amps right now. 2,195 milliamps. Current Over. alarm. Even though it's visual, perhaps an audible would have been nice as well, but um, not too shabby. Okay, let's bring it back down and let's just try... 200 milliamp, yeah. Excellent. So once again, in auto mode, uh, AC-DC current as well as AC-DC volts uh, resistance also. Anything else, diode continuity, capacitance, you'll have to take it out of auto mode and go into manual select. Gotta say, not having a tilt stand for me is a real mm, pain. At the very least, a magnet would have been nice. Anything to sort of give us some sort of an option here, but uh, yeah, constantly flat is where we're going to be. Flat is where it's at in the smart zone. Go figure. Already resistance mode is next. Starting off with an 8.25 ohm. Uh, now we're probably going to get a beep because anything under 50 ohms, according to the manual, is going to set us off in continuity mode. So let's see what happens. Here we go. In auto mode. And yeah, so 8.4 ohm coming up. And we're getting that uh, continuity sound just because we're below that threshold. Uh, speaking of resistance, let's see if we have any resistance on these test leads. So 0.2 of an Sitting ohm at 1 mega ohm right now. Not too shabby. 3 mega ohm. Hey, looking good. 6 mega ohm. And 10 mega ohm. Hey, not bad. Not bad. Back down to 1 mega ohm. Okay, so at least when it gets there, there's no settling uh, issues whatsoever. Nice and precise. Let's try 100K. 110K, coming up as 111K. Let's try 200K. 500K. 900K. Not bad, I like it. Alrighty, next up are those pesky LEDs. Boy, this can cause really 
uh, untold problems on multimeters for some reasons. But uh, here we go, light emitting diode time. How well will we fare? Let's find out, starting off with the green LED. Oh, it is lit. And, oh, that's right, we are not in auto mode. My mistake, my mistake. So to do diode, we have to switch manually into diode mode. So a couple of clicks here on the side. And we are now in diode mode. Okay, here we go. Green LED. Oh, wow, it is lit. It's really hard to see, but it is lit. And there's the forward voltage drop over the yellow. Same. And the red. Okay, three for three. And the blue. Oh, yes, it is lit. And we do have a forward voltage drop over to the white. Oh, beauty, beauty. So in LED land, at least, five for five. Good stuff. All right, let's just check a standard diode. Maybe we're going to have an audible beep with this. Oh, uh, maybe not. Well, that's too bad, but it's working. No problem. Output voltage in dial mode is respectable 3.2 volts. As well, we have that flashlight on the back, just a small LED. Really not that bright, but I mean, worst case scenario, it'll definitely come in continuity handy. Continuity is next, and we are manually in continuity mode. Default probes, 3 to 1. Oh, surprisingly, not so shabby. Loud latched. Hey, I'm going to give that about an 8 out of 10. Surprise, surprise. Pro Masters. Yeah, latched loud. Honestly, I don't see any difference in terms of the overall continuity. Uh, hmm, interesting. Sixty point six decibels maximum output is actually not that loud. Hmm. Capacitance mode is next. Now they are claiming uh, 60 millifarad is the capacitance maximum for the Anning 620A. Well, let's just see if it can do a little bit better. Sitting here with a 100 millifarad capacitor. Here we go. It's thinking. Giving us an OL. Oh, there we go. Awesome. 99.97. Beauty. So, hey, yes, indeed. It got, well, it does at least up to 100 millifarad, 100,000 microfarad capacitance. Awesome. It's been a while, so I thought I'd bring in a second opinion on this uh, 100 millifarad capacitor and just see what we have. So, uh, putting up on the B side right now. And we should have an answer any second. And there we are, 99.60 millifarad. So yeah, good stuff. Indeed, the ending was spot on. Your zone. Sitting in AC volts right now, 118.9 volts AC, true RMS. And as well, we have our 60 hertz frequency. We have that nice visual as well, the amber glowing, letting us know that we are in the danger zone. Taking a look at live now, uh, it's gonna basically tell us whether or not the electrical is hot. Take that negative probe and stick it in there. And yeah, it is hot. Awesome. Alrighty, here we go. NCV mode again. Haven't had a whole lot of success lately. So we have that interesting graph at the bottom, but at least we are getting a reading here. So not super sensitive. I mean, this is a mains panel and it's not even going all the way, but uh, at least it is detecting something. Yeah. Already teardown time, here we go. Um, starting things off, let's take a look at the battery housing. Two triple A's is what powers this anning. And we do have that nice brass threaded insert, so no worries about wear and tear over the long run. There is the lens cover for the flashlight. And uh, let's get in a little bit deeper. Already. Oh, so interesting. Yeah, let's start off with those input jacks. And I gotta say, nice, nice. Look at those solder blobs, nice, big, and uh, that is definitely there for the long run. Um, we have one tiny PTC that is on the voltage side, and as well we have also a tiny current shunt over here at a uh, lopsided angle, and 5x20 uh, millimeter fuse ceramic uh, on the high current slash milliamp input. Moving up the board, there is our relay. That's actually a fairly quiet relay. I didn't hear any uh, any noise, no switching, no uh, snap, crackle, pop. 
Um, so that is a good thing. And that relay is actually from Hong Fan. Uh, it's a Hong Fa relay, HFD3. And they, they actually call this a sub-miniature signal relay. And I believe it's capable of withstanding up to 2,000 volts AC. Uh, so yeah, pretty robust little relay. Moving further up the board, we have our piezo speaker right here. Directly on top of that is our LCD display driver slash LCD controller. Um, that is also from Holtec Semiconductors. Holtec is uh, well known for their uh, excellent LCD controllers and that is what is powering that big LCD display. Directly on the other side here is our little EEP ROM. Uh, that is the 24C02N from Microchip Technologies. Uh, that is a low power CMOS technology enabled EEP ROM that is feeding all the good data to the main IC. So chances are that is a DreamTech IC. Now I cannot say 100% because it's copped, but uh, yeah, chances are that's what it is. Further at the top here, we have a couple of soft touch buttons. You can tell if you just take those little soft uh, buttons apart we have our tiny little uh push button switches right here and that is for uh the power as well as the hold and the um live detect so uh yeah directly on top of that we have our flashlight slash led over here and the ncv non-contact voltage detection is somewhere along here oh wow i'm not seeing a whole lot uh, other than these two plates here but you know what we're going to take it apart further look on the other side see if we have any more ncv goodness all right here we're on the other side that is the main blank uh, display backing for the lcd here's our zebra strip slash elastomar that feeds directly on top of this back plate here giving us all of our good lcd display as you can see though there is really not much else in terms of ncv so this is all we have right here uh it's embedded within that pcb and that's why you have that really so so slash iffy iffy non-contact voltage ah. other side of those input jacks in there once again really nicely and i like what they've done with that uh, surrounding plastic header okay gonna put everything back together come back with my closing thoughts 620a from anning was an interesting multimeter to review um but did it really steal my heart the answer is no this multimeter i had so many requests to review it i'm really glad i did but at the end of the day i just don't think it lived up to all of the hype the fact it has non-captive leads is a definite bonus in my book way to go anning a uh, really good set of ranges as well and you know what especially in resistance mode it was fast to range that is really nice to see for a smart style uh, multimeter also, the fact that it had that onboard temperature sensor, another bonus. But hey, it wasn't also great in smart meter land. Shipped at least with some sort of case or enclosure, just because that display is so darn easy to scratch. Don't even get me started on that tilt stand. What tilt stand? I know. Why? Oh, why can't they put a tilt stand on these types of multimeters? And that poor NCV, once again, meh, in NCV land, just wasn't up to the job. The fact that those input jacks are not color coded for safety really makes me nervous. Adding, come on, there's a lot of newbies out there have never touched a multimeter and they might appeal to this sort of easy breezy smart terminology but at the end of the day it could be awfully dangerous or risque at the very least not to have those safety inputs color-coded when all is said and done however at the end of the day I think the Anning 628 proved that it is most capable and smart at the same time the Anning 620a gets a solid three out of five stars hey thanks for watching this review everybody till the next one Keep on testing.